Hello guys. So as I promised, uh, this one is also the breakdown and setup of the feature I uh, made quite ago. Uh, it is uh, reactable water. So I have a few tutorials on this feature, uh, which contains uh, buoyancy and integration with Niagara system. But I decided to make this one as a proof of concept, so anyone can use it free and see whether uh, he or she needs uh, to have reactive water for their project or they don't. Uh, so uh, this one works with uh, an actor, uh, with actors that uh, have scalable meshes. Uh, all you need is just to drag and drop uh, the proper blueprint on your scene and that's it. That's everything that you need to make it work. Uh, here are some elements that can be adjusted and it's my personal choice to make those here. Uh, they are changed via the blueprint and uh, the reason is pretty much simple. I can make uh, several blueprint instances and each will have their own uh, setup. So I don't need to have several uh, material instances. Uh, yeah, something like this. So. Uh, as I said, uh, before buying, or like if you like my version, you can use this one. Uh, before buying uh, UIWS or other uh, fancy, good looking, and uh, pretty much costly stuff, you can uh, check this one and see whether you like it or not. So, uh, the basic idea behind this feature is uh, that we have several uh, render targets which are uh, written inside one material of the time and we are actually uh, switching between these render targets to modulate uh, the spreading of the wave circle. So uh, what what you need to focus on uh, once you have this project. So it's endpoint. So it's in the world units and as you can see from uh, this preview, it covers the whole area where my uh, landscape is. So, it is built from the center, so just make it uh, in the center of your map. Uh, player Split Force is the force that applied on the particular position of your character where the wave should happen. And Underwater High uh, is actually the uh, depth of uh, the volume which is underneath uh, the water plane. So this one, uh, it stores the post process right now with simple uh, change of uh, temperature to simulate that we are under the water and uh, that's it. If you take a look at the folder, those textures are just the placeholders for materials. Material we have uh, three functions that are used to modulate the whole feature. One is my base water, it's a simple one here, and the whole magic happens here. So basically, here we are written the final result of the accumulation our render targets. And this one fancy HLSL function, uh, you probably have seen it a lot, is for masking out uh, an area which is under the bounds of the UV. So once UV is, un is more than one, we won't need to have uh, the effect applied. If you have your water uh, material, you can simply uh, copy paste this and uh, use it uh, to blend with your normals. So, what else? Uh, what else? What else? Uh, we have a post process called Depth Masks. Uh, it should be applied over the scene capture inside the water. So it's here, and we use this to capture skeletal mesh uh, object to like to use uh, as uh, the mask inside the material where we use render target. So uh, as you can see from this point of view, uh, camera captures uh, the projection of uh, top projection. So we will see uh, our character. Uh, like uh, body and once we are adding uh, 
the height of our water. Uh, it will actually cover the proper shape uh, inside the water. All collision happens inside the active box. Uh, it's simple uh, box where we actually have ignore everything but overlap, overlap with our pawn. The water plane is without collision. Uh, scene capture happens every frame and to make it work you always need to have capture source set to be a final color. So here I have some elements that are not available from uh, an instance, from this point, but you can make it uh, seen, just uh, simply click on this eye icon. It's uh, split quality and high map resolution, so basically the higher they are, uh, the more precise uh, sharp effect you will receive, and water simulation distance. It's the amount of units in the world, uh, once we are above this value, we have higher than it, uh, we will actually withdraw, uh, drawing our effects of the wave spread. So, uh, to assign your material, you need to go here in the construction script, and uh, on the event graph, it's the whole logic. So basically you can see that I have everything encapsulated inside the functions and you can uh, check every of them in case you want to know what happens. Uh, I don't want to make a lot of uh, explanation right now because I have the whole tutorial for this. So simply use it as it comes. Uh, this uh, particular uh, feature has only one key out. Uh, I actually don't uh, really think that I should probably uh, solve it at this point, so once, uh, like, to make this logic as simple as it can be, uh, I only have uh, to check whether my player uh, is uh, moving. I need to capture its position. If we have a lot of uh, elements captured inside our scene and they are standing still, they will actually, when we are walking, uh, make sort of mask of the water spreading. It's not a big deal, but uh, it's this artifact. So that's it. Let me launch and you will see how this works out of the box. So please uh, use it and in case you'd like to uh, support me, I have Patreon, I have Discord uh, server, everything under the video. So please, uh, you are welcome and yep, see you soon.